What's up, my fellow family ambassadors? What's good? What's popping? What's going on in between, underneath, above, and all of that good stuff? How you feeling? How you kicking? How you breathing? The moral of the story is put y'all, put your lights, sweet baby. How you doing? All right. I don't really got time to do an intro right now because I got to get this word out. Because as you can see, I'm currently in bed. Okay. And God gave me this revelation. And I have to get it out like now. So, the intro will come in later, okay? Later. Let's get right into it. So as you have read it by title, you know what we're talking about today. So let's get right into it, y'all. So, okay. So let me read the scripture to you, and then we're going to discuss it. Um, it's gonna. This is gonna be a real quick video, right? Okay. We are in Matthew ten. Um. Matthew chapter ten verse 38 and 39 and it says and he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me and he who finds his life will lose it and he who loses his life for my sake will find it now i'm reading this in the message version um i should have pulled it up in the king james version but nonetheless the message is still the same okay so God was just literally speaking to me about this and I had to like go ahead and get this revelation out. So basically, when you think about Jesus Christ and how he came on earth to live just to die and to think of him carrying his cross, like paint the image of Jesus Christ carrying the cross and like him stooped over carrying the cross right and i was asking god like why did you keep like highlighting the cross to me and god told me with wood wood has splinters wood has it's not always smooth and the cross was heavy on jesus and he says why would you think that i will allow my son to come suffer and you not also suffer. And when he says that, he means like, why would you think that life would be, life wasn't easy for Jesus Christ. So why would you think that life for you would be easy? Count it all joy. Count it all joy. And he was saying how that's how our life, our walk with, our walk with him is supposed to look like. Carrying a cross does not look like jumping through a bed of roses. Carry a cross looks like even in the midst of things not going your way, you're still giving God praises. So I'm gonna get let you know what happened. Um, but before I let you know what happened, let me finish this thing real quick. So, um, and then he also then it also says like he who findeth, he who findeth his life will lose his life, and that is basically talking about like okay. So as of lately, I don't know if y'all are aware, but like there is like a a a slew of things that has been going on where people have been um not people but just in because i was also a i fell for this also where i was eating water down god and i god had to come and he's still unteaching me some things and i'm still unlearning some things but god had to himself come and correct some things because the god that we worship yes he love us he love us so much that he sacrificed his only begotten son. And when you see the Jesus, the, the, the life of Jesus Christ, it should let you know the kind of God that we worship. Even though Jesus was God's only begotten son, Jesus still had to die on the cross. He still had to be nailed to the cross. God had to turn his back for that to happen. Do you understand that if God had to turn, God had to send his son to come down on the cross for us, 
Jesus was betrayed. He was a perfect being that had to come into a world full of sin. He had to become man so that he can take the authority back from Satan so that he can so that, so we can get authority through him. He's that same God that we worship now. God loves us, but he's not a fool. He don't play about sin. He doesn't play about excuses. He doesn't, he does like, as of lately, God has been teaching me about my feelings. Like, he even like, Jasmine, I love you, but your feelings are not my problem. Your feelings, like, <laughs> it sounds rough, but like, your feelings are not my problem. There's bigger fish out here to fry. There's souls out here that needs deliverance. There's souls out here that needs to hear my word. Your feelings, we can deal with that later, but right now, like, to carry, and, and, and those who of us who have found God and have found the truth, and we have been, we have gotten lost in the prosperity gospel, in the gospel of, like, thinking that everything is just going to, everything's going to just work out, I mean, everything's going to work out for our good. No matter what, the, everything that the enemy plans is always going to work out for our good because of the sovereignty of God. Not because we are earning it. Not because anything we've ever done deserves it. It's just because of the sovereignty of God. And when God says everything's going to work out for your good, it does not mean that everything is going to work out in the way that we think. The Bible says his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. So... When we in when we embark in this on this walk with God, it never anywhere did it say that it was going to be easy. So I don't know how we all, cause I I was a part of it, how we all got lost in translation, and I know why because we are failing. Um, quote, Prophetess Tiffany Montgomery, we are failing an open book test. I was one of those people who would just go listen to a sermon and not fact check what is being fed to me. I'm eating it, digesting it, thinking it's from God, and I never open my Bible to fact check what I am hearing until now. Until now. But back then, I never fact checked. Do you know how much spoiled food we were eating, bro? If Jesus is the bread of life, and we weren't eating truth. We were eating the bread of lies. The bread of death. There's a lot of um, purging. Uh, 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 there's a lot of fleshing out that the blood of Jesus has to do. But it can only do that if I didn't. This is the Holy Spirit. It can only do that when we open our mouths and use our tongue that has life and death in it and speak life back into ourselves. And ask the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse our bodies and purify our bodies and flush our bodies and our minds. And we invite God back into, back in our mind for our mind to be renewed. Because in the scripture, in the Bible, it says that, um, that we should not conform to the world, but by the renewal of our minds. The reason why the renewal of our minds is so important is because God knew that we were going to be fed Things that were not of him. He knew that. The, and the things that you hear. Play in your mind. The things that you hear. Shape the way you think. The things that you hear. Shape your attitude. The things that you hear. Shape your life. The things that you hear. Shape the things that come out of your mouth. How many of us have heard something. And repeat a, you've heard a joke. And then you repeat it to somebody else. That's literally how it works. When you hear something. So we have been taught of this prosperity gospel that no matter what you do, once saved, always saved. Don't believe that that's a lie. Once saved is not always saved. Let me repeat that. Once saved is not always saved. And when it comes to picking up your cross, it is imperative that every single day we pick up our cross and we remember that everything's going to work out for our good, but not in how we think it. 
our desires is not God's desire. You have to submit yourself to God so that God's desires can be your desire. And when you're when you are fully submitted to God and have surrendered your life to God and the will of God is what is is operating in your life, nothing nothing will catch you by surprise. But you also nothing will catch you by surprise because God is going to make sure you're prepared. But you are also aware that not everything is going to bring a smile to you. And the reason why I'm saying this is because this. So recently, I was having an issue with my lending office, right? And, um, well, not really my lending office, my neighbors or whatever. And I got, like, a violation. Two violations, actually. And I thought that God was going, because I fasted, I prayed about it. And I thought that God was going to literally erase the violation or cause there to be a some type of like vindication not like a vindication to like the person come apologize to me because i don't care about that but like a vindication in a way where like the violations are gone and just today just now god was like i did do it you still have a home did you do you not like i never told you I was going to remove, like, I never told you I was going to erase the violation. I never told you it was going to look like this. You assume it's going to look like this. And I was like, mm. And so that's what carrying a cross looked like. Carrying a cross is walking blindly into my, walking blindly and allowing me to lead you. Walking blindly in my will. Because your desires are to please me. And when I tell you, it may feel horrible, it may feel bad, but it's a certain, not feel bad, but like it may not, it may, it may feel uncomfortable, but the uncomfortability is where, is where we're being molded. The uncomfortability is where your heart is being, is being, um, circumcised in the midst of the uncomfortability is where you're being purged. The uncomfortability zone is where you want to be because that's what prepares you for the comfortable for, for you to be that's what prepares you for the blessing you get what i'm saying and i also have god has just told me this even in our blessings i don't think we're supposed to be comfortable because i don't ever remember a time in jesus christ's walk in the bible that it talks about jesus being comfortable Jesus was never from the moment Jesus stepped foot, stepped ground in the um from the moment he was born. He was born and he was they was trying to kill him when he was born. Then when he when he got he was a little bit older, he went into the church and saw what they were doing, uncomfortable. Then he disappeared off off out the book for a little second. Then he came back, and when he came back, it was off the ground running into his ministry. I don't think there is a time. When we are in our 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 purpose, when we are walking in our purpose, when we're walking in the will of God, that we're supposed to be comfortable. I think that is something that is flesh led is comfortability, and that's I Holy Spirit speaking. Holy Spirit speak. We have gotten accustomed to being comfortable that we expect our walk with God to be comfortable, and when it's not comfortable. We rebuke the devil, but uncomfortability is a gift from God. Wow. Wow. The fact that you're uncomfortable allows, let's, it's, it's a, like a, a, it lets you, it's a notification to you to let you know you're exactly where you're supposed to be. The uncomfortability lets you know that you're exactly where you're supposed to be. When you're suffering, because one of the fruit of the Spirit is long-suffering. Why do you think that's the fruit of the Spirit? It's because we're supposed to go through suffering. The children of the devil, people who serve the devil, this is their world. This is their domain. This is where they're they, they going to thrive at. Because after this, but they ain't no more thriving. Okay? They ain't no this is this is this is their little playground right here. 
We are spirit being. We're not, this is not our playground. You know what I'm saying? So we're not supposed to be comfortable in the midst of, we're not supposed to be comfortable in the midst of darkness. We're not. We're supposed to light up the darkness, but we're not supposed to be comfortable in the darkness. There should be no time in our life, in our walk with God, that we are comfortable. That's the purpose of peace. I'm going to stop it right there. I'm going to see you in my next video. Love you. I mean it. God love you. You know it. Mwah. Later. To carry your cross also means doing good to those who hate you. To carry your cross means forgiving when you don't feel like it. To carry your cross means to die to your flesh every single day day and second of the day to carry your cross means to choose the will of God over your desires over your wants to carry your cross means you're so busy attending to carrying your cross that you don't have time to compare your walk to anybody else because you're carrying your cross and the reason carrying your cross is so uncomfortable it's because it's not a delight to your flesh. You are literally killing your flesh when you carry your cross. And it's about time I give it to you. And it's about time I do all the things you want me to do. It's long overdue. Do, do, do. And it's time to do it all.